I run the marketing department here at Art Storefront. It's been doing that for five plus years or so, I think almost six years maybe in March. And let me tell you sort of the agenda for the day. Um, we have like a high level of who we are, what we do. Um, are you just a website company? What about the marketing? Uh, all the things we do, it's all encapsulated in one video. It runs about, I think like 15 minutes or so and does a really good job of explaining. I know most people that, that come on these sessions still aren't completely clear on what all we do and how we help artists and photographers uh, sell more of their art, both online and off. So we'll be able to get into all of that in the video. And then after the video is over, I'll come back. I'll usually have some short remarks and then we can get into the Q and A, uh, which is always my favorite part of these sessions. I talk to, you know, quite literally hundreds of artists and photographers on a weekly basis, both on these sessions, which go three days a week, and then also sessions with our customers. And I, and I bring that up to say, I've heard it all, I've seen it all, and I've been in this business for, you know, a long time with a couple of different companies. So if you've got questions about anything, websites, limited editions, commissions, pricing, niche selection, perhaps you've never sold anything at all, you're just trying to get started, um, or, you know, you were, things were going great pre-pandemic and you lost your offline revenue sources, what to do now, uh, or, or really anything um, about how to sell art and photography and grow a big business there online. So uh, the questions are always the best part and, and we'll look forward to getting to those uh, on, on the backside of this. But April, go ahead and play the video and I will see you guys shortly. This is the homepage I'm talking about that we just like recently we did, and I think it does a really good job articulating sort of who we are, what we do at a very high level. And if you scroll down the page, there's a bunch of videos of me explaining um, a, whole bunch, a whole bunch of things, everything that we do from top to bottom. But our tagline, which states, everything that you need to start, run, and grow a successful art business, uh, really does sum up what we do. You know, we, we get pigeonholed as, they're a website company, they're a website company. And yes, we do offer websites, but it is a tiny, tiny portion of what we do. Ultimately, we learned a couple of years ago, uh, the hard way, by the way, if we are going to grow and be successful as a business, art storefronts, that is 100% dependent, surprise this one, but on how successful our customers are, on how much art and photography our customers are selling on a yearly basis. And so when you look at that as the problem that we're solving, it becomes so much more than a website because a website is not enough. But still, we're gonna talk about the website. I'm gonna get into the other layers as we go down. So it does indeed all start with the website. I will pull one up because it'll make it more interactive. And you know, anyone that's been trying, attempting to sell art or photography for any period of time, I'll use Bono today, they know one thing conclusively, selling art, in an e-commerce capacity digitally online is not like selling other items. It's not like selling swim fins or ladies' handbags or um, electric scooters or bicycles or anything else, right? Buying art, okay, and buying art online is A, an extremely visual process and B, an extremely friction-filled process. And what do I mean by friction? I mean, friction is all of the various different things, okay, that will prevent a visitor to your website from turning into a buyer, okay? And so really, everything that we do with our software is attempt to solve for this friction, okay? To solve for the friction, to solve for how important the visual aspects are towards selling art and photography online. And you know, it's never any one feature, it's all of the features working together. It can be little things, like when you select a media type, which is canvas, it changes to a canvas, a gallery wrap canvas. Most people don't even know what a canvas is, and so we've developed special videos that show the differences, the nuances in the real world, what an actual canvas print looks like, what's gonna show up at their house, uh, uh, what are the high points of this one, how are is canvas different than metal? Oops, I missed a click on that. And so you can see what a metal print looks like and how it's sitting flat, eventually how it's hanging up, all the nuances, the intricacies, because it is such a visual process buying art. We have a feature called the wall preview, uh, which allows you to cycle through various different room types. Again such a visual process buying art not only can you circle through the different room types and yes you can add your own room type images in we use some generic ones by design and you can size pieces up and down see what it's going to look like do i need a 36 by 49 is that too big do i instead want a 28 by 38 we're making it easier for your potential customer to get to a buying decision what if they want to their, wall, their walls aren't white right what if they're this ugly color 
or there's something a little bit darker. Is the piece going to look good with this color, right? Because again, buying art is just such an incredibly visual process. Um, you know, another feature that that everybody likes to talk about that we get a lot of plaudits for is we Here have this, we are we have this feature. And excuse me, mute that. Called live preview with AR. Okay, and what this is is this allows somebody to come to your website with their telephone can be iphone or android you can see the phones here on the right hand side and without downloading any apps uh they can just use their phone their camera and press one button on your website that says live preview and what this is going to do it's going to take the camera on their phone okay which is going to show the real room the real wall where the art will potentially go and then it takes your piece in augmented reality and it projects it onto the wall and you're able to move it around with your finger. You're able to size it up, size it down, take screenshots. And so is it going to look great in the room? What size do I need to get, right? And so, again, this is attempting to solve for the visual friction of, I don't know if it's going to work in my room. I don't know what it's going to look like, right? It's just getting them one step closer to a buying decision, removing the friction from the process. And, you know, I've been doing e-commerce marketing, digital marketing my entire life. Everyone loves to gravitate towards the wall preview or the live preview with AR. But the reality is when you do this for any period of time, it's not about one individual feature. It's about all the features working in conjunction. And you never know which one's going to end up, you know, if we think of a sports analogy like a basketball team. It's how many players you have on the court that can contribute, right, to eventually scoring that basket. And so it's why we do the demo process. We have literally hundreds and hundreds of features all to remove the friction, all to help you get better at selling art and photography online. And when you, when you request one of these things, uh, our outreach team will reach out, have a conversation with you, and schedule it. It goes like an hour and 10 minutes, and we just go through feature after feature after feature. So it's not about any one of them. It's about all of them working in conjunction. Um, independent of that, let's keep working down the page. So we also have a ton of back-end software. It turns out running a, an art business, art photography business, there's a ton of individual little nuance and things that, that can slow you down, okay? Things like uploading an image and how many images do you have to upload to your web page for all the various different media sizes and types you have. It's very helpful to be able to just upload one, have all the sizes auto-populate for you and tell you exactly what you can sell. Uh, things like markups. How do you set markups? Can you do it globally? Can you do it per media type, right? And so no one likes to talk about the back-end features, but we have a slew of those as well, all uh, there to make your life easier, to give you time back, okay? Um, let's talk about our fulfillment. And I w we love talking about this. This is in our, our company DNA pretty significantly, but I'll pull up a website. So we're on Bill Stidham's site. Um, or I should probably start here, actually. So we are integrated. Well, let me start here. You can have it any which way you like. If you're an artist that just does originals and you get orders, obviously you're going to be responsible for fulfilling the originals because you have them. Uh, if you're an artist that has a local printer or a photographer that has a local printer, you really like using your printer, you can use your printer. The orders come in, you send the order to your printer. We call that self-fulfillment, no problem. What we recommend our customers do, though, <laughs> is integrate with one of our print partners, and I'll get into the reasons why. But we've got graphic dimensions on the East Coast. We've got Bay Photo on the West Coast. We've got Print Partner for our customers in Canada. And then we just recently integrated with a company called Guten that handles the merchandise, and I'll get into that in a second. Um, how does it work? You sign up, you get your, uh, your site set up, which usually takes 14 days or less. You click a button that says, I want to integrate with this print partner. An order comes into the website. The printer gets paid. You get paid. The order gets printed. The order gets boxed. Your logo goes on the side of the box. Boom. It ships to the customer. You touch absolutely nothing. There's nothing you have to touch, nothing you have to do. All happens automatically. And again, it's to give you back that amount of time. And, you know, no one has time in today's day and age to be dealing with the admin, okay? Any time that you spend on the admin, by which I mean sending the order to your local printer, uh, uh, checking on the proof, uh, uh, sending tracking numbers, did it ship, any of that correspondence, all of that, if you're spending your time on that, is time you are not spending on your biggest problem, which is your marketing. So we really believe like streamlining sort of this drop shipping, print on demand, automated fulfillment, is a very, very wise decision if you want to create successful artists and photographers. Now, just recently, um, this was probably, what, like a month before Christmas, maybe, we integrated with a company called Guten. And what it allows our customers to do is sell merchandise of a myriad of different kinds. You know, uh, hoodies, uh, iPhone cases, tank tops, 
Um, you know, they can come in, adjust the image exactly how they want to see it. Maybe they want to tilt it depending on what case it is and get iPhone cases and, you know, a number of different other items. Um, we've got throw pillows and uh, I clicked out of it and coffee mugs. And we're adding more and more and more and more of these. And on the subject of merch, we realize, again, if you go back to our original mission, why we exist, you know, we want we need to create a set of circumstances, a set of conditions such that the artist, the photographer can make and grow as successful a business as they want. And so some artists look at this merch and they're like, they turn their noses up at it. And like, that's not fine art. Why would I ever want to do that? Some are like, I'm all in. I love it. We don't care. Our job is to provide as many different opportunities for artists and photographers to be successful as possible. And we've been totally blown away by how much of this stuff actually, believe it or not, sells. Um, and some of it is higher margin than you would think. Like a throw pillow is $44. And what does a tote bag cost? I think a tote bag costs $38. So sell it or not, you have every opportunity imaginable available to you. If you want to have it all in kind of like Bill does here on his site where, you know, you have your fine art uh, uh, media types across the top and then you have the merch all in one product page, great. If you want to have individual items in the store, you want to have your artwork fine and then you just want to have a line of phone cases. Uh, if you want to have one for a couple of weeks and then turn it off, you can do any and all of that and it's one click to turn it on at any point in time. It's automated. It's completely automated in terms of fulfillment and, and that's not going to change. And we realize again, like artists and photographers are essentially just creators, right? You're just creators and you have a talent. You have a talent with a brush or you have a talent with the lens. You want to monetize that talent. Okay. So again, our job is to give you as many different opportunities to be able to monetize that talent as possible. So that's how we, that's how we go about it. And, you know, again, it's a debate about when to use it or when not, but somebody on one of these um, sessions earlier was like, you know who's the greatest rock band of all time? I was like, no, who? He's like, the Rolling Stones. He goes, guess what the Rolling Stones have at their concerts? I said, what? A giant booth for merch. He's like, they sell hundreds of thousands of dollars of it a year. If the Stones sell it, I'll sell it. So anyway, I thought that, that kind of stuck with me. It was fun. So that's our, our print fulfillment. Um, and, and I should say to you that we're adding calendars and we're adding puzzles and we are adding photo books. And to be honest with you, if they come out with a line of hot air balloons, we'll add hot air balloons too, right? Because again, it's creating a set of circumstances such that the artist and photographer can be successful. We don't care where the success comes from. I don't care if Brian gets into business and he's the, the number one iPhone selling case guy of the entire United States. He's got a successful business, right? So not for us to decide. Um, support. We believe we have best in class support. If you took a look at our Facebook ads and you scrolled through the 350 of them, You'll see more positive responses for the support than just about anything else. We're very, very good at this. Yes, it's in all the venues you think it is, email, phone, chat support. But in addition to that, kind of what I'm most proud about is we run six days a week, including Saturdays, Zoom sessions, just like the one you're on right now, okay? And you can pop into one at any point in time with any support-related issue and get fixed, get unstuck. There's screen share. They can take over control of your computer and just get you sorted. Uh, get you sorted instantaneously. So we're very, very good at it. Not only do we support our application, we ask, we, we, we ask you guys, we teach you guys marketing all year long, and which I'll get into in a second. What if you're having a problem with Facebook or with Instagram or with MailChimp or with your Facebook ads? We actually support that too. You can pop into a Zoom session and say, hey, Patrick, I'm stuck on my Facebook ads. I'm getting this message. Can you help me? And our team will get you unstuck. That's an amazing thing. There's not many companies that do that. So I'm very, very proud about that. Um, that's in terms of the overall website picture. And we essentially do all of that, okay, to give you your time back such that you can work on the biggest problem that every single solitary person on this Zoom call has, which is their marketing problem. You need to get better at it. And let me tell you, I've got 4,700 customers and there's only one universal truth about every one of them, right? Every niche imaginable, every subject matter all over this country and others. Every one of them has a marketing problem. The person that just past $500,000 a year in sales has a marketing problem. They want to grow that business, they have a marketing problem. The person that just is getting started, sold their first piece, they have a marketing problem and everybody in between, right? It is the biggest problem. And so, you know, we want to create successful customers. We realize we need to teach artists and photographers how to market. And so how did we solve for that particular problem? We created collectively what might as well be called the art business university. That's how we look at it because I'm not sure that's a better term to explain it. One, 
We have the best digital education that exists in terms of selling art and photography online, full stop. I'm, I'm hang my hat on this. We have detailed documentation that we call playbooks on every marketing facet of imaginable. How to run an email campaign, how to run a Black Friday sale, how to go live on Instagram, how to go live on Instagram and Facebook at the same time, how to go live on Instagram and Facebook at the same time with your laptop on a cell phone. Detailed, step-by-step, -step, audio, video, screenshot documentation. If we're asking you to send emails, we will give you the email copy. You just adjust it to taste for what you're doing. So the playbooks are incredible. They're very robust and they're very focused on teaching you how to market. We pair that with a 365 day a year marketing calendar, okay? It has on it beginner, intermediate, and advanced. You take on what you can take on. You're never not knowing what you need to be doing on a week in, week out basis. You start doing, you, first, you're overwhelmed. You're like, this is, I've never done this. This is crazy. How am I gonna survive? And then you fight through it. And you, and you got through the beginner level, and then you take on the intermediate, and then you take on the advanced. The majority of our customers follow this doggone near verbatim year in, year out, because it works, it's effective. Not only does it tell you what to do, but it solves for one of the greatest, the other greatest pandemic of our lifetime, the shiny object syndrome, okay? Not only does the calendar tell you what to do, it tells you what not to do, okay? What not to be spending your time on, right? And how do I know this? One, I'm very good at digital marketing, two, we have 4,700 customers and I get to see all of their data. I can tell everyone on this call conclusively out of the 4,700 customers that I have, I have not seen anyone turn a positive ROI at marketing on Pinterest. No one is making any money from marketing on Pinterest. So I'm going to tell you, you don't have to worry about Pinterest. I see you laughing, Mary. I do not want you spending any time on Pinterest, period. Waste of time. So too with SEO, okay? So the, the calendar, is equally powerful on what you need to focus on is what you ignore, okay? It's what you ignore, and that's a big deal. Number three of the Art Business University is what we call office hours, okay? We take the entire customer base, we split it into three. Until you sell, until you sell $2,000 directly on your website, you're in the traction group. Uh, and after you sold $2,000 on your website, you're in the ramping group. After you sold a much higher revenue threshold that we don't publish, you get in the advanced group, which we call growth. We hold week in, week out, every single solitary week, and we took one week off for New Year's, but essentially 48, 49 weeks a year. Uh, Zoom calls like this, you come on on a weekly basis. There are, it's either me or members of my team. We go over the playbooks, we go over the calendars, we talk about wins, uh, how it's, somebody landed an interior decorator and sold $35,000 worth. They're gonna come on and tell their story. Not only are they gonna come on and tell their story, they're gonna say, Here's the email that did it, here's the copy, here's the Facebook post, and you can go and look at that stuff, right? And you're learning in concert with your peers. Digital online education is not enough, okay? If you look at the stats out there, I don't care who it is, Kajabi or Masterclass or lynda.com, 30% of the people that buy those courses actually finish them. So we can't just have digital education. We have to have in-person teaching sessions, and everyone knows how to Zoom now, it's our new reality. So those sessions, which we started like, I think two weeks, three weeks ahead of the pandemic have been the single solitary biggest fundamental change to our business we've ever had. If before the pandemic, I had 100 customers and I told those 100 customers via email, guys, Black Friday's coming, you gotta get going on your sale. Here's the playbook, right? And then I recorded a podcast episode and I was like, we're gonna do this. 35 out of the 100 would take action. After these video sessions where I'm able to go through things, people are able to ask their questions, raise their hand, get unstuck, learn your peers, I have 75 people taking action on that sale and it's fundamentally changing the business. It is making our customers more successful, uh, uh, more accountable, actually staying focused. Like, look, you guys are all solopreneurs for the most part. I mean, we could pull this entire group and not a lot of you guys have a big team. You don't have an office behind you where you're yelling at an intern to help you out. You are a solopreneur, okay? You, you know, myself, the CEO, we've been entrepreneurs our entire life. I know it's a roller coaster. I know there's highs and the lows. When you're on those lows, you need to kick in the pants, right? You need to be lifted up sometimes. And that's what these Zoom sessions do too, which is incredible. We follow it up with a Facebook group that is highly curated, okay? Uh, uh, there's no trolls, there's no nonsense in there, right? You've seen some of the other groups out there online and how ridiculous it gets in those things. And artists are sharing with other artists, photographers are sharing with other photographers, the people that are in the landscape niche are talking to others in the landscape niche. Hey guys, what do you think of this new direction? What did you use in terms of pricing? They're publishing their wins. And so sometimes you can't just hear it from us, the official company mouthpiece. And so it's nice to have a whole bunch of people that are doing the same journey at the same time, um, helping each other out, sharing, what are you doing here? What are you doing there? So 
that collectively is the art business university. And it's, it's like a college. It, I mean, it really is. And the difference is you pay your tuition, you come in, and there's no graduates because the learning never stops, right? And, you know, in addition to that, it, it never will stop. In today's digital marketing landscape, the goalposts are just constantly moving, right? Like so quickly, you feel like you just learned something and it moves over here. So we keep you up to date with all that. As a final, about six months ago, or maybe five months ago now, we started an in-house marketing agency. And it's an in-house marketing agency that only does one thing. It helps artists and photographers sell more art online than off. And we believe already, as of current today's date, it's the biggest it's the biggest sole focused art and photography marketing agency in the world. And that's not hyperbole. I've been asking on these calls, can someone name me an agency that specializes only in helping artists and photographers sell their work? I haven't found one. No one's ever put one in the chat for me, especially not a big one. Why? Because my aforementioned point, selling art and photography is not like selling swim fins or ladies' handbags or scooters. It's hard, right? It's really hard. Uh, and we're good at it because we've been working at it for a long time. Also, you know, I... I get upset, right? Because I look at all of you guys as like, you own a McDonald's, right? And if you owned a McDonald's, you have to know how to do the ordering. You have to know how to clean the floors. You have to know how to open the building. You have to know how to operate the drive through window. You have to be able to flip burgers and fries and do all of that and do the ordering, right? Like it's your business. You need to understand those things. But at the same time, I'm not naive in the sense that 80% of our customers still have full-time jobs or in some capacity. Maybe they're service-based photographers and they're trying to sell their fine art. So I get it. You need you need to be able to have the ability. If you don't have the time to do the marketing and you have the resources, you need a la carte things that you can jump off the shelf. Hey guys, I need my Instagram profile tuned up. I need my Facebook page tuned up. I need to help with a sales campaign. You need to be able to do that sometimes. In addition to things like, we'll completely build your website for you. You don't wanna do that. You hate building websites. Uh, your fears in life, in order, are death, taxes, and building another website. I get that, I get that, right? So you can drop your images in a folder, Tell us to build the site, we'll build the site for you, okay? We'll manage your Facebook ads, okay? We will manage all of your social posting. And again, it goes back to the top premise. Like, our job is to create successful customers. And so we looked at it six months ago, and it's like, we need to have an agency. And then some people are like, well, I don't, I don't, I, don't, I want to do it myself. Fantastic. Our job is to have the best DIY product, do it yourself, learn, come on the sessions, and then also have an agency where you can pay. And again, it's all a cart or it's, you know, up, up to almost full service. And the, the amazing thing about it is, you know, I've been doing marketing a long time, right? What do all marketers love? A case study. Oh, we love a case study, right? With the sexy data about this huge win and we publish it on social media and we use it for lead generation. So totally did that all the time, okay? Guilty, guilty, you know? And if, if, if you lose, you don't publish it, right? You wait till you hit a winner and, and do all that. But it used to be, I would go and run a case study with a customer and you know, I'd have limited bandwidth to do that, and then we would build the playbooks. Well, guess what I have now? I've got an agency staff. I've got one guy that all he does all day long is spruce up Instagram pages for artists and photographers. He's done, he did 65 of them last week, or you know, 65 last month. So imagine the learnings that we're getting. What happens is the learnings are going right back into the playbooks, and then they're coming onto the Zoom sessions and they're teaching, and we've got a little flywheel going on, right? We've got a little artist and photographer education flywheel. So it doesn't matter if you ever order a single solitary service from the agency, and we don't even care if the agency ever makes any money in all honesty, because all it does is just improves the product, makes more successful customers, uh, and helps us grow. So we really, at the end of the day, are fundamentally a business that can be thought of as a rowboat, right? Um, it takes our oar, your oar, we jump in the boat in the same time, and if we can get that thing rowing in the same direction, the faster we can get that going, the better everybody goes. So that's Art Storefronts. In a nutshell, uh, that's my presentation. Okay. Um, programming note, April, can we get a smooth transition on the end of that thing so it's not so herky-jerky when it ends? Um, use that one you used yesterday. So, okay, that's who we are, what we do at the high level. Um, and so we can start talking about your questions and, and getting into them. What's up, Amy? So you came on here. I see. I'll be able to. I'll be able to get your email questions. It's a good question, yours, and I. Uh, I love answering that one. So a couple of different ways that you can let me know you want to ask a question. There's like a, a participants bar at the bottom, and what that'll allow you to do if you click it is to digitally raise your hand. And so what I normally do is just start at the top and go down. Uh, in terms of hands that are up, uh, if you want to be on video, awesome, love it. If you don't want to be on video, totally understand that. I hate being on video. I would turn my camera off if I could. So no worries there. If you want to just put a question in the chat, 
um, that's all good too. And then if you're watching on any of the socials and you leave a comment, I will see those. I will answer those too. Um, yeah, so let's get into it. Uh, I'll, I'll, Amy, you gotta raise your hand. I know you've got a question and, and you got it, but just the participants one. You, you, I'll, I'll, I'll do Susie first and then I'll come back to you. How's that? Okay, Susie, go ahead. And you'll, Susie, you'll need to unmute your mic, which is in the bottom left-hand corner. Okay, can you hear me now? Uh, I've got you. Okay, great. Um, I'd like to see the list of courses, a course schedule. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that they kind of mentioned to look up on social media, but mm -hmm. it just would be so much easier if you guys just put it out there. And for those of us who's checking out your company and mm -hmm. kind of debating whether to go with your company versus your competitor, I think it's, it, it would be helpful, okay? And uh, so, especially for those of us who got a full-time day job and, and doing this on top. And so it, I think it, it would be really helpful to know, can I handle the, the amount of time that's gonna take and so on, you know? Yeah, yeah, there's, so there's a, there's a couple of questions in there. One, okay. you know, the awesome thing about the time, and just to yeah. give, you, give you an FYI, I'd say 80% of our customers have full-time jobs. Um, okay. So the, you know that it, it's. A, I mean, but you know, some might be related to art. I mean. Yeah, but, some are, some you know, aren't. I, I do something entirely different. So you know. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some are, yeah. some aren't. Uh, it's less about how many hours that you can devote on a weekly basis to your marketing, and more about doing it consistently, fifty-two weeks a year, which is what nobody okay. does. And so you know, yeah. everyone's path is a little bit different. But I think where most artists, photographers fail is, you know, they get real excited this is gonna be my year. And they start working on their marketing for like a month and a half, and they don't get any results, and then they quit for the rest of the year. Because no, one, no one's there to hold them accountable and say like, look, the marketing right. is all about the consistency uh, that you do week in, week out. In terms of the courses, right. yeah, you know, we, we advocate, we certainly work off the calendar in which we tell you what to do all year long. When to have a sale, uh, when to just do regular marketing, uh, you know, what language to use when it's running a sale, how to post on Facebook, how to post on Instagram, how to do a live art show. And so everything that we advocate essentially has a playbook um, attached to it, right? So it's not right. like browsing. You guys know that, but we don't, the outs outsiders don't see the content of it before we sign up? No, no, you don't. I mean, no. on, on, on the demo, they'll show it to you, but it's, you know, we reserve it for customers. It's, it's good. It's very cutting edge. It's, you know, very in-depth audio, video screenshot tutorials if you know if we're asking you to use language we'll give you templated language that you copy and paste a lot of it has to do with our software um so but I, you know i think if you spend any amount of time investigating who we are from a constant content standpoint look at the youtube channel look yeah. at the look at the podcast um you'll you'll realize you know we know what we're talking about okay so each course say is how long you know yeah, well, so, so, so a couple of things. One, the playbooks are what could traditionally be thought of as courses, right? They're, they're right. the step-by-step -step guides. But yeah. in addition to that, just like this Zoom call, we have weekly Zoom calls every single solitary week of the year um, that our customers come on and we teach whatever we're advocating you do. After we're done with that, uh, we open it up for Q&A exactly like we're doing right now. So you can say like, hey. the night or during the day or? Right now, they, right now, there's like six days a week at a whole bunch of different times. Sometimes we have hard standing, like every Tuesday is one session for one group. Every Thursday is one session for another group. We have, you know, outside specialists that we bring in. Sometimes we have customers teach. They're, the sessions are all over the place. So if you make it, great. If you can't, we have secretaries take notes on every single solitary one. Afterwards, you're sent a table of contents that are video highlights. And so you can just, you know, click here, click there, click there, uh, get, get what you want out of it. And then, and then, um, watch it after the fact. So, so there's like a recording of it. Exactly. Well, exactly. Recording of it or like note taken. Both, uh -huh. both okay. like, both. so, so the both. notes, you don't have to like go and watch, you know, a yeah. three hour video because a lot of the questions yeah. you're going to be like, I don't care about that. But what I'm yeah. saying is it, it has a table of contents. Oh. And so you can just say like, it. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we yeah. also too, like Susie, so, you know, the, the session will go down and, yeah. then, and then the top of the highlights will say top five most important highlights from this video and we'll show that. So, yeah. you know, like yeah. I'm saying, if you're short on time, these are the five yeah. things you must see and then you can go, right. you can look at it. Yeah, then you can look at all the questions. Okay. Yeah. So the other question I had was, you know, if, if, if someone is ordering prints off of your work, mm -hmm. then 
what is the artist earning from that? The price of the print that, that someone pays because you don't get any money, any portion of the framing and or anything like that at all, right? So there isn't a there's a pricing the table. Gets. There's a pricing table on what you know the prints cost. You can, yeah. and then you set the markup from there and, you know, you can set the markup globally, meaning like everything in my store, I want you to mark it up 250% or you can do it on a per item basis, however you want to do it. Okay. Yeah. So okay. you, you essentially get everything above what, you know, it costs to actually print and ship the thing. Okay. All right. And then what happens if you are like, you know, printing it on T-shirts and mugs and mm -hmm. the value of your original go down because it's now- No, not in the slightest, stuff? not in the slightest. That is the biggest bunch of nonsense. I, you know, a, a lot of times, a lot of times like art consultants and gallery owners will say that like, yeah. you know, you, you can't sell prints. You know, prints are gonna lower the value of the original. Like, are you nuts? How, who came up with that nonsense, honestly? Like, if you have an original and somebody owns the original and now there's a bunch of prints of that original, all of these people that want the original, like, no, it doesn't hurt. How many prints of Starry Night are there out there? There's a few, right? right. Starry Night is still a really valuable, you know, there's 10,000 prints of Starry Night. It's worthless, right? Like, no, nonsense, no, okay. nonsense. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Great questions, Susie, thank you. Yep. yep. Okay, so I'm gonna unmute you, Amy. You have to hit your mic in the, in the lower left. So. Amy, Amy sent this question. I got to, I got to give the, the rest of them some context because it didn't, know. she's a, a portrait kids photographer. Do I have that right? Sort of kids photographer. Yeah. Family. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she just, she's now making like a bit of the pivot into wanting to do fine art. And she has an established photo business of many years, presumably an email list, you know, some Facebook, some Instagram followers, a whole bunch of people that know, like, and trust her. And she's like, wait a minute, I need to, this was, this was her question in email. I need to separate the two of them out and have these two separate entities. And I say, absolutely not, right? And I say, absolutely okay. not for a reason. You know, everyone thinks that like your photo business, give me the name of it again. Dramatic imaging. Dramatic imaging. Like I made know. it when I was 20 and I felt yeah. like it was a good blanket name for, for sure. everything that I wanted to do creative because I knew eventually I wanted to be a painter. Mm -hmm. The thing is, is that like, you know, everyone thinks that when you're buying art, you're buying the brand name the end of the day but really what you're buying is you are the brand you are the brand of that photo business and you are the brand of the art you're a solopreneur for the most part probably both of those capacities and you have a whole bunch of people that know like and trust you right you have a whole bunch of people that have been following you presumably on your email list for years and years and years i absolutely do not want to split that attention i want to put all of these okay. things under one roof okay and and then okay. it gives me the opportunity to market to these people that already know like and trust you right so all you're exactly. doing is letting this group of people know, hey, uh, not only can I shoot your kids and you know get your Christmas cards knocked out or whatever else, but I also have these other things going on. And you know every time that they come in for the service, they're reminded that I can get art from Amy too, which is awesome. That's number one. Number two, okay. my single solitary biggest pet peeve with your business is leaving money on the table, Amy. Leaving money on the table. Do you sell prints to those customers? Uh, for my photography? Yes. Or for my... For your um, I just sit, I They buy a digital art gallery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then they make their own prints. Yep. Unacceptable. Completely <laughs> unacceptable. So, you know, especially, especially in today's day and age, because POD is a thing, and you, you made me do it. Amy, I'm gonna have to get my stack here so I can tell the story. One second, I gotta get my stack. The reason this infuriates me so badly, by the way, is because one of my best friend's wife is like our local, you know, she does all the Christmas cards and all that, all the everything. And she does the same thing, right? Like here's a digital gallery, go get prints where you want. No, I don't want to go get prints where I want. I want to tell you which ones to get and give me the prints. And so instead, <laughs> instead, and let me, let me use her as an example, but she is all about like nailing her lighting in one venue, right? And so she'll set up like, you know, whatever three hour window is like one after another, after another, after another. If she would just get an assistant, okay? And have a table on which 
There is a wood print and you show it and you let people pick it up. And there is a metal print and you show what it looks like and you let people pick it up and you let it know it's easy, it's ready to go, ready to hang on the wall. A framed paper print. Sorry, my green screen is gonna make that look a little wacky. Here's what acrylic looks like. One of my very favorites, okay? These things are expensive too, so good high margin. Also ready to hang, also don't need a frame. Also this, right? Okay, a, a, a framed gallery wrap. You know, you would have an assistant so me, the dad, let, let, let me just break this down for you because this gets me so fired up. You're, you're over there taking photos, okay? And my wife is over there helping you wrangle the children, okay? And then back behind somewhere, the dad who got dragged to this thing, I'm, I'm just looking at my phone board. So your assistant is there with a table set up with all of these prints in an order form, okay? And you say, look, give you just something, something to look at. In the meantime, you know, I, and we cater to dads like you because we know you hate ordering gifts. You hate going into malls. So if you want to get something, uh, you can get it now. You can email me. Here's what the pricing looks like. And oh, by the way, we bundle in with the shoot uh, a, a one-time printing discount of such and such, right? So you can get this package or that package and watch what happens, right? And watch what happens. And then better still, we're actually going to start building some of this technology soon. Better still, what I want from you, Amy, is an email. Okay, I want you to get my wife's birthday on that session. I want you to get my kids' birthdays. I want you to get my birthday. And ahead of my wife's birthday, I want an email. Hey, Patrick, every year, every year. Hey, Patrick, I know your wife's birthday is coming up. If you need a quick gift, I have all of your archive that I've shot. You can order a print and it'll be there in time. What happens if you start doing that? Right now, okay. you, yeah, right now, you have a business where you're trading dollars for hours, okay? The minute that you start adding the prints and making that a massive amount of your business, you're now transitioning into a business where one, the AOV of a session, Amy charges $400 a session. Now she's selling these prints every time. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But instead of making $400 a session, you're now going up to $650, $750, $850, right? And then, and then the LTV after the fact, like two weeks, a month ahead of time on Christmas, okay? Email your entire database and you go, guys. So are you saying don't offer digital prints at all? You can. No, no, no. 100%. 100% offer the digital oh, okay. prints, right? Because most, some of your customers will love that. But no one knows what the media types look like. No, no photographers like you have a table set up where like you can see, touch, and taste because you're not, you're not, this, this is what goes on the wall, right? This is what sits on top of the piano in the living room. It's the actual print and you let people touch them. No, 90% of the people on this call couldn't even tell you the difference between an acrylic and a metal and a canvas and a wood and what it looks like. And so you'll find that just by showing them, you will get people that are going to get so fired up. They're going to start buying it. Every single solitary, you build a database every single solitary time before Christmas, month before. Guys, gals, Christmas is coming. If you need to order any art uh, of the kids, of the kids 10 years ago to get on the wall, uh, maybe grandma got a new house, you want to do whatever, uh, I'm doing a special discount and it'll ship in time for Christmas. Like, genius, genius. Okay. You know, okay, I mean, cool. it's, it's easy. It's easy to do too. So I think that'll really help you. But yes, I think you should have all of the art uh, on one thing. Well, so I'm not even sure if I, how much photography I still want to do. I stopped advertising for it. It's just word of mouth that just trickles in mm -hmm. just perfectly whenever I need it, to be mm -hmm. honest with you. Mm -hmm. I really want to be known for being a painter. Yes. So I have my dramaticimaging.net website mm -hmm. that I don't even know if anybody even looks at or cares about anymore because if they know me, they just Yeah, exactly, me. exactly. But now I want like art that they can buy from. So... It's two different websites, right? It's like I would just combine them. I would just brands. combine them. I would combine oh, them all combine into them? one. Yep. Oh, I would, okay. I, I would cool. just buy amyrimhall.com if you can get it. And I would redirect the other one to amyrimhall.com and just put everything on that. Should thing. I ditch dramatic imaging, that name? Yeah, I would because no one cares. Yeah, I mean, I, I know exactly what you're Did talking about. Like everyone has your phone number. It's not it's not generating any income for you, right? Like people are not no. like, oh, dramatic imaging. No, they're like you know, you're, hey, who, who did your photos? Amy did them. Here's your number. That's right. how your people are coming into mm -hmm. your business. So yeah, I, I, I wouldn't ditch it because you've had it for a long time and sites that have been in Google's index for a long time have, have decent uh, uh, name ID. And so what you do is you just go into GoDaddy and you redirect it to, you know, amybrimhall.com and that's going to be your art site. And then on that site, we'll just have a page. Hey, still doing photo shoots. Want a book? Call me. Done. Handled. Yep. So just the, so it can be a part of my art website, but it's just not going to be the main focus anymore. Exactly. It's just going to be on exactly. the side. Okay. Exactly. That's cool. it. That's how you want to do cool. it. But I'm telling you, cool. like if you, if you, even on the shoots that you did, if you incorporated capturing the print business, like no one wants to go to Costco with the, the digital gallery and order it. 
right? They want to be told like, what's awesome? What are the best ones to get? I can see them now. Just sell them to me, right? And it, and it, and it, and it yeah. yeah, it ends up becoming a passive income business too, especially if you're shooting the same families for the next like 15 years. Although, you know, you're telling me you don't want to do that anymore. But uh, just, just to finish the thought, it's like, you know, you have the last 10 year archive of my family ready to go. And every Christmas you email me, by the way, you know, if you wanted to put something together or send something to grandma or send something to mom, like, you know, it just gives you these residual income opportunities. It's incredible. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, and then the other thing I was wondering about that I think I asked you about was what I'm mostly interested in knowing right now is as I'm starting to sell this year, my paintings, mm -hmm. I've realized that I don't really care too much for the pool of people that I have. Yeah. As horrible as that sounds like, I mean, I've made a lot of good sales just from people that I know from Facebook. So like, mm -hmm. I have like a following of maybe 2,200 on Facebook, maybe a thousand on Instagram because mm -hmm. I am just slow to get on Instagram. I just couldn't yep. handle one more stupid thing to deal with. And yes. so I just, I should have done more Instagram instead of Facebook. Anyway, I, now I just, I post to Instagram, goes right to Facebook. Yeah. And so my big thing is I just want to figure out with this, how do I find people that are not <laughs> yeah. my income or below? Yes. I want yeah, to yeah. find other yeah, yeah. people that are going to pay in the thousands for my painting rather than, oh, I don't have $400 for that. When I'm like, oh my gosh, I know I could sell this to somebody else for like 3000 or whatever. You yes. know what I mean? So that's what I'm frustrated with. Yep. Totally understand. You just need help marketing. That's it easy okay so it's not it, it's good. just it's do it it's doing the work you know the, the secret sauce if we have one is everyone thinks there's some sort of shortcut right and especially you know what you're asking me is a variant of the how do i find high net worth buyers right and mm -hmm. you, you know how you find high net worth buyers turns out there's no shortcut sad i've been trying to find one my entire life they're all dead ends what you, all, <laughs> all you do is you work consistently on your marketing and everyone's followers are a bell curve down here is the lower the, the lower income people that are never going to buy anything they'll like comment and share then you have lower middle class middle class upper middle class and then you have the high net worth followers everyone's follower graph falls into that bell curve so the job is not just to try and design marketing messages for this portion of it the job is just to raise the amount of people that are in that curve and the score will take care of itself i just literally yesterday just yesterday a buddy of mine i uh, was like dude you're not going to believe it uh he's a customer uh you're not going to believe it we're friends now uh, uh, not Facebook friends because I don't cross the customer line. I keep it real, real clean. But he's in Slack. Anyway, I don't even know why I said that. He's like, dude, I just got a commercial art buyer. It looks like, like a fifty or $60,000 deal. And I'm like, how do they find you? Right? Because this is a high net worth buyer. It's what everyone's always looking for. You know, in addition to the high net worth individuals, it's how do I get the people to place art in hotels? Or how do I get the people to place uh, art for big commercial installations? And so he's got one, right? How did I find you? Oh, um, somebody shared one of my Facebook posts and they got it right so someone that was not the high net worth down there in the curve somewhere shared it with the person that was the high net worth and it happened and it happened because he's consistently working on his marketing which is always how it works but we teach that all year long cool yeah sounds good okay thank you thank you all right so i see there's a bunch of questions in the chat i will start at the top frank had a one about his about his website scenario uh where'd you go so I create original one-of-a-kind artwork, and I already have the website. Um, and he's asking, can I use your service without using the website? Yes, technically you could, although there's a ton of sort of our secret sauce that's built into the software that will help you sell probably more than, than what you have currently on your site. But I'm going to unmute you if you want, Frank. Um, you'll have to hit the mic icon in the bottom left. I'll let you know when you get it. But what, what is your one-of-a-kind work that, that you've got on there? Uh, it, it's kind of unique. Um, it derives derived from my photography. I manipulate it digitally. Mm -hmm. uh, it is printed G clay, okay. and then I incorporate reflective material into the into the canvas. Whoa! I definitely want to see what that looks like. That actually Absolutely. sounds fascinating. Um, and how is how is how is the current website working for you now? You know, I literally just built it yeah. about a month and a half ago, yeah. um, and it's not completely finished, but the um, e-commerce portion of it is up and running. Okay. Which which WordPress, Shopify, what? Yeah, uh, WordPress with WooCommerce. Yeah. WooCommerce, yep, yeah. yep. Um, yeah, you 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 absolutely could keep your same store and just use all the education and everything else. What you would find if you went that route is one. 
you just built this entire thing and you're so heavily invested in it. Like anyone telling you that you should ditch it and come with us, you're like, what? No, no. You know, hard I've worked on this thing. It's my baby. But what you'll find eventually is that, you know, in, in, in perhaps the more important context is 99% of the people on this call don't have a website problem. Meaning if you, if I picked up your business or uh, Susie's business or Sheldon's business and moved it from one website platform to another, even if it was 10 times better, nothing would change because you don't, you don't have a website problem. You have an attention problem. You have a marketing problem. You have a traffic problem. So what would happen is, is that you would end up using that. You would get more traffic to your WordPress site. And then all of a sudden you realize like, oh my gosh, I'm going to convert more of it if I'm using them. So you would move over to it eventually. But yeah, you could. Is it we could use your product without using the um, print on demand kind of thing. Since I'm doing my own original, we don't need, yep. uh, you know, it's not going to come in a million different sizes and things like that. No, 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 not at all. You set, you set all of that and you have granular control of, over all of that, right? Um, okay. I don't want you doing your printing. I don't want anyone doing their printing because I don't think, like, you, you might be in a, in, a, in a different boat because you're treating the canvas with whatever you're treating with it after the fact. But, mm -hmm. like, you doing the printing or anyone doing the printing or you know, you using a local print shop, which by the way, you know, anyone can do anything on our platform. We don't have any like strict rules, but I think every minute that you're dealing with the admin and you're sending an order to the printer and you're going down there to look at the proof and then you're going to go pick it up and then you're coming back and you're doing whatever, or if you're doing it or you're monkeying with the printer or you're buying the materials is all time you're not spending on your marketing, right? And right. printing sadly in today's day and age, like the art form of it is gone, right? And you know, people get upset when I say that, but here's the deal. Everyone has the same computers. Everyone has the same monitors. Everyone has the same color calibration devices. Everyone has the same printers with the exact same ink, with the exact same paper. And really what you're getting by using a local printer or, you know, or worse doing it yourself is, you know, good service, right? Like that's it, that's all you're getting. You know, the, the, the printers that we integrate with, which is it's Bay Photo on the West Coast, it's Graphic Dimensions on the East Coast. Like these guys are doing like, $50 million a year in business, right? They have all the systems, all the SOPs, all the media types, everything set up. And it's like the shipping, you know, the, the, the fees that they pay to ship at FedEx when you're doing $50 million a year versus what you would have to pay to ship. Like, it's just not worth it, right? Like, you know, doing all of that yourself or wasting your time on it is not going to fundamentally make a jump in, in your revenue and in your income. So that's, that's sort of why we ward people off of it uh, or, right. or attempt to, but that's, that's sort of a, you know, tangent. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Um, okay. That was Frank's question. Hold on. I'm going to get circling back up here into the chat. Um, that was Frank's. For any one piece, can I have print fulfillment set up different ways? Yes, uh, Kim and Phil. I'm going to unmute you guys too. There's two of you, so it'll, it'll, it'll be easier. Um, yeah, you can do it any which way you like, right? Like, especially, you know, let's, let's use sort of a baseline situation. Like, if you're doing originals, obviously you're responsible for shifting those because you're creating the originals. Um, if you want to integrate with our print partners, you can do that. If you want to self-fulfill, you can do that. You can change it on an item by item basis, depending on how you want to do it. All, all the options are there, right? All the options are there. Cool. Is there, I mean, one of the things that we spend a lot of time on is for every piece that she finishes, she first has to go get it digitally captured. Yeah. She's doing that locally. Is, is I mean, that sounds like it should still remain the same sort of process. Yeah, there's no, yeah, yeah, there's, there's no shortcut for that one, right? Um, yeah. You know, the, we do have, are you just taking it to a photographer and they've got a setup and they're doing SLR? Or you get a like whole drum scan thing. It's the same, the same local vendor who does the prints today. Got it. They have the room set up to do the, capture yeah. and yeah they keep the images on hand and then they can do the different sizes so yeah to um, totally understand that do they do they give you do they give you the images too after they scan them yes good mm -hmm. good mm -hmm. yeah yeah i mean it you know it it sucks right because you know local printers are people too right and you know they're they're awesome people and they have jobs and they have everything else and i don't i definitely don't like knocking them you know we, but we have pretty significant printing in our DNA. So the, the founder of this company founded a company called Breathing Color, which is like a huge fine art canvas and paper manufacturer. Uh, they have like a whole bunch of different mediums. They're a huge company. So he takes the printing aspect of it very, very seriously. And again, like every single solitary artist and photographer that, that, that we have as a customer all have a marketing problem, even the ones that are doing $1 million a year, right? Like the number one thing they can do to grow that business is get better and do their marketing more consistently. And so... You know, I don't want anyone 
having to spend admin time unnecessarily going and doing that stuff, even driving down there. Now, you're in a different scenario because of the scanning, right? Um, you know, I, I get that he includes that, and that's part of the deal. But I would prefer that you don't use them, and I would prefer that you don't waste any time going down there, period. I would prefer an order comes in, the printer prints it, they slap your logo on the side of the box, they ship it, and you touch nothing, right? Like, that's the right. ideal situation because it's all admin time back that you're going to pour back into the business. But at the same time, yeah, all the options, all the options are there, so. So we would still have it captured, and then, and then from that point, you guys would take it from there. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. the capture would remain local. Yeah, and then he would be like, "Why do I keep capturing these images, and I'm not doing any printing?" Him, and then he'd right. be like, "Yeah, right. he'd probably be like a little upset." Um, you could you could try and get another person to end, to end up doing it, but yeah, I mean, you you have you have to get it. You, you have to, there's no shortcut to that, right? Like you have to do okay. it. Yeah. That's great. Do you have any? I think the only other question I have is it's more along the lines of her spending time on her art, mm -hmm. not on anything else. Now, I'm with focused on the marketing, mm -hmm. on the business side of this. Mm -hmm. So I guess on your platform, you know, some of the things I'm thinking about here are the financial aspects of that. And how is that handled? And it's easily downloadable into Quick books, whatever. Yes. Fun, QuickBooks, mm -hmm. things like that. Yep. Um, the credit card process, we use credit card with Square and we use paypal things like that mm -hmm. is that all kind of within the platform and then it's all kind of there and i can download that right in? yeah exactly what we do we're not we're not we don't have our hands in any of it we believe the artist should own everything right so what the majority of our customers do is they just get a stripe account and a stripe is just like a basically it's a merchant account um it's like the biggest digital one in the entire world and then it integrates with your bank account order comes in, if it's an original or commission, you're fulfilling it, all the money goes directly to your account, we don't touch it, it doesn't ever come to us, it just clears, goes directly into your bank account. Um, all the transactions, you can obviously download the uh, um, the QuickBooks integration or the file that you can import into QuickBooks. I'm not exactly sure how that works, right. but I know we integrate with it. Um, you can take PayPal too, um, of course, and then yeah, using using the Square for the local stuff, also a great way to go. And you know, I agree. It's it's awesome when you have a team, right? When the husband mm -hmm. and wife team, especially because she can focus on creating, you can you can focus on the marketing and, and running the business. But she does need to do some stuff on social, right? Because everybody wants to know the artist, right? They want to have like yes. that bond. They want to like know your weird pic peccadillos and what do you do and are you funny on video and you know all that yeah. kind of stuff. So, you know, you you, you yeah, do... we're finding that that's definitely the case. You've got to keep her, you know, who oh, she sure. is about her posts. Yeah. For sure you do. Yep. For sure you do. It's such an important part of the sale. And and then also too, you know, everybody everybody thinks or, or, or we're sort of sold this bill of goods that like we're gonna live in this wonderful world where the website's there and it's it's working for you day and night and when you sleep and everybody just goes on and services themselves and buys whatever they need to and that's it. You don't have to touch anything, right? But like the minute your price points start getting anywhere near a thousand, they wanna talk to somebody, right? And they would love to talk to the artist or they would love to talk to you. And it's like, that's going to happen all the time. And guess what? You know, until you're doing 10,000 orders a month, it's a good use of your time. It is a good use of your time, right? Yeah. Like one of the, one of the major initiatives, you know, so I get like, a, you know, a portion of the software development team to, you know, mad scientist style, like cook up my little things and, you know, what I want. And one of the biggest things that I'm pushing on, I believe that, you know, COVID is ushered in a, a transformative change to video, okay? And let me, let me sort of explain it. Yes, video has been around forever, nothing new. It's been on the web forever. But now, as a result of COVID hitting, all of us have been thrown into this scenario where you don't need a fancy production style. You don't need hair and makeup and lights and everything else. Like people that were hosting our local programs and TV and sports are sometimes doing it from their living room. And these are shows with huge budgets, right? So... There's that, and then there's the other side that everybody knows how to use Zoom, right? Everyone gets on this call. Everyone figures out how to unmute themselves. Everyone's doing this everywhere. And so, you know, one of the high, most effective things an artist or a photographer can do, you could almost judge the health of a business with how many one-on-one -on -one private video consultations an artist has. Like, interested in my work? Would you like to talk about it? Here's how you can book a Zoom call. You set up the Zoom call, you have the pieces in the background, you talk about them, you get to know the person, and the sheer volume of sales that are going to continue to go down in that fashion going forward are going to be staggering. And it only becomes more important the higher the price point goes, right? Like there's like an unwritten rule in 
SaaS, which is what we're in software as a service subscription software business that once you start knocking on like the twenty five hundred three thousand dollar price point, you have to have a sales staff. You can't you can't just have it be like a checkout cart. Now, the only thing that breaks us is Tesla. You can go on and order a Tesla and you don't have to talk to anybody and people do that all the time. But for artists like the consultative selling via video is a big deal. I mean, I would way rather have that happen than I would have them on the website. Dirty little secret there because, you know, open it's a relationship like not only did i just buy this piece oh yeah i know the artist right i know kim i've had some wonderful conversations with her she's amazing right like it's it, it, it helps sales get over the line it increases the aod of the sales the average order value and it's just incredibly effective way to do anything in today's day and age and you know every single solitary merchant that that is selling right now if they're smart, is seriously thinking about how to bolt video into their operation. And all of the smart venture capital firms are writing articles about it. And they're talking about it. It is, it is going to be the next biggest wave. And I think, you know, sort of the abstraction of it as a final is even our business. Our business is essentially turning into a retail store. We're a software company that's turning into a retail store. What do I mean? From nine to five, we're, we're already at this clip, to be honest with you. We are probably live in Zoom sessions with our customers six days a week, probably already 40 hours a week, meaning any point in time, you can pop right into an experience, just like we're having right now, and talk to somebody and get your problem unstuck or ask questions or learn a marketing technique or tactic. And I think every single solitary business around is going to do that. And, you know, there's like um, everyone's saying it's, it's for some reason China is ahead of the game on this, on us, but it's like, the biggest thing in China. Like, you know, as you would think you would go into a normal retail store, every single solitary one of them have a video presence and they're either doing live broadcasts or you can pop in and talk to them. And, you know, it is, it is such an insanely effective way to sell art. It's crazy. So I'm mega, mega bullish on what video selling is gonna, is gonna portend for certainly for the next year, but the next decade, uh, you know, et al. But anyway, you, you got me ranting there. I'm not even sure what it, I wasn't even answering the question. Which, but that's like, great information. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So something to think about. Um, okay. Thank you. Okay. What other questions? What other questions, Frank, I got? Um, as an original painting artist, your company would make a print of the painting and you would be responsible for sending the prints. I would be responsible for sending the original painting when sold. Yes, that is correct. Um, you do not own any of the brand's logos that I have? No, absolutely none of it. Um, I know other sites that once you're using them, you can't take your logo with you. No, we are, we are the antithesis of any of all of those sites. Um, so not at all. Next question is, we are an artist family, cool, with a venue gallery space. Uh, do we need to each promote our art separately? Ooh, this is a hot button one here. You know, the, I, I could get into a lot of trouble with this, this particular uh, uh, categorization, but I'll say it anyway, because I think most of the people have significant others on this. You know how a marriage is designed to be between two? The minute you have a marriage designed to be, you know, Mormon context, polygamous status, where you have like multiple partners, that is a recipe for disaster usually, okay? And that's my disclaimer. I have to say it. Because when you have multiple different people, all with a somewhat of a different agenda, all wanting to put different work in, and yet the gallery entity is selling all of their work, well, if partner number one is doing all the marketing on all the work and partner number three is doing nothing and partner number three is getting the sales from partner number one, then how does that all shake out, right? So it, to, to have it go down successfully, you have to be really upfront and communicative early on. Um, you know, you have to make sure that there are boundaries and that people need to be doing a certain amount of stuff. And then, you know, what happens to the entity if there's a divorce, right? Because if you're going to build up a Facebook page and build up an Instagram account, have a bunch of attention, have a bunch of traffic going to this thing, who's going to own it if things go sideways? And so there's a lot of that stuff you have to over communicate on. Uh, but once that does happen, it, it, it can be awesome. It can totally work. Um, you could totally do that. Someone that's way too long. I'm just going to, I'm going to unmute you so you can ask. All right, Salma, I unmuted you. You just have to get your mic. I'll let you know when you get it. Might be Zoom issues. Oh, Salma. Oh, Salma, you're going to make me read this whole thing out? I will. If you really don't want to come on. Okay, I think she's having audio issues. All right. My hubby is a prolific artist in several areas like rawhide, sculpture, found art metal sculpting, contemporary painter, and has hundreds of products uh, because he's consistent no matter what. 
and photographer of most pieces. So triple threat, quadruple threat. Uh, yours is traditional indigenous pottery and have packages to offer in healing arts. Daughter is a photographer. Oh, sorry, that you're the, the family daughter. Son, a musician and a DJ and decides fences as CEO. Is there value to combine as a family? Yeah, that's it. That, that actually is interesting. If it's all a family and would you combine that? Um, you know, there's, there, there could be some really fun family branding aspects of it, right? Um, you know, I could see it being really fun. I would probably, yes, you could combine it all. Uh, yes, everyone could try to do some marketing. I would probably do one Facebook page for the, the family gallery, one Instagram account for the family gallery. Everyone would be responsible for doing some work on that, eventually run some ads, um, and then you would probably all have individual Instagram accounts as well. Um, but yeah, you could, you could definitely pull it off. Um, no, the, cons the consumer doesn't care. The consumer honestly does not care. It's not going to confuse them in the slightest, right? Like, you know, if they find any one interesting thing about any one of you and they come to the website, like, you know, you're just going to have a grid and it's going to say best sellers and then you'll have the individual, all of your faces and, and what you do underneath and then they can click in and go and find that. I don't, I don't, I, it, it the, you know, confusing the consumer is not the issue at all. It's, it, it's just not, practically speaking. They're not going to like come on there with the intent of wanting to see something that they just saw an awesome post or this or that and then be like, okay, that's it, I'm out. It won't happen. So I don't think you have anything to worry about with that capacity. Like I said, I think some of the, the frustrating thing is like, and you know, I, I'm, not, I'm not being negative about this. You could totally do this and pull it off, but over communicating that everyone pulls their weight in terms of the marketing and driving traffic to the website is really, really important. Or, you know, if you're a family and you're just like, look, we know that there's gonna be times when some of you are doing more than the others, whatever, we'll all just grow it together. Um, yeah, it's, it's certainly more difficult when it's not family than it is when it is family, because you know, you're family, you can sort it out. So that's how I'd answer that question. Um, you know, one thing I'm gonna put in, I, I made a note to do this, to put into the chat is, I'm gonna send you the link tree. I highly recommend you guys subscribe to our YouTube. It's the last button on this little link tree. I like using this link tree because it opens the app if you click it when you're on your computer or on your phone anyway, but you know, we're putting out some really solid content for free. Uh, we have this weekly show called Art Business Mornings, which is really good. It takes like the, the latest and greatest marketing technique. Oops, I sent it to Brenda in a direct message instead of everybody. Uh, April, we should make a note just to have that thing handy and start sending it because it's, it's just helpful. It's like a little digital business card. But I, I really recommend subscribing to YouTube. We're putting out some solid, solid content on there and um, keep you up to date. It's totally free. And, you know, you'll be notified when we go live and you can pop in on those broadcasts and ask any questions you want. Wes, I saw your phone ring. Did that, that get you all sorted? Good. Yeah. It's, it, it, it's, so, it's so funny, by the way, Wes, because, you know, we have like our little like um, internal communication tool, right, where I'm able to get anybody in the company. And I, I take what you sent me in the chat and I go throw it into that thing. And I'm like, his name is Wes. What's going on here? And then Matt immediately comes back. He's like, dude, worst game of phone tag ever. Uh, uh, calling him right now. And then, so, so that I have that in the window. And then I see in your little thumbnail, you're on the phone, right? You pick up the phone and you walk away. I was like, that's just really funny. You know, kind of like a, a real time, real time scenario. Yeah, I was in the middle of uh, texting you, like, well, have him wait till after a question and answers because I find this interesting before I finish that. Ring, ring. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. So, yeah. We so, took yeah. care of it. We talked, we talked, we good. We yeah. Good. Yeah. It, it always gets it always gets crazy at the end of the month. And I, they, and they I, I do enjoy watching the question and answer because there are so many unique situations, so many unique uh, questions that the, even this is educational. Oh, 100 percent it is. And 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 I you appreciate know, I appreciate the, the program here. The the internal sessions like we had a session yesterday. Okay, it went three and a half hours, and you know the 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 number two guy in my marketing team, Taylor, and I had the conversation afterwards, and it's like the attendance all the way to the end was like still really high. Like that's a long session, right? Like it's a long time. Like we have to split it up. And a lot of times people aren't even raising their hand. They're just listening. And, and you know, it's not all about like how good our answers are, but it's to your point, how interesting the situations are and how they approached it and what they're hung up on. It's like, we're, we're finding that that group learning that way is actually like mega beneficial, right? Because if, if you think you're the only one having a problem, trust me, you're not. Someone else is having it, right? And then, you know, a lot of times they're like saying, how did you solve this? Or what service did you use? Or how are you doing this? So like that, that type of, uh, I, I think group learning can just be mega effective, you know? 
there's a, there's, yeah, there, there's a lot of people too that I can tell that are like because I can see their cameras that just you know treat treat some of those sessions almost like passive radio and they're in their studio doing their thing right and they're just kind of yeah. you know yeah so it, it it's really cool that way um it's been one of the super fun learnings of you know the change that the pandemic has has, has sort of ushered into our company but yeah 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 that's kind of why I took myself off the camera because I'm I'm doing things and listening mm -hmm. and then get back on here because uh yeah. Yeah, it, it's a good listening tool as well. So to hear it is good. Yeah, yeah, it'll help you get get you thinking about new things. Okay, good. So I'm glad I'm glad Matt got back to you. You're sorted. Um, I promise we are we actually are really good with communication. But we had a nice office with a receptionist and everything else, and then you know, in came the COVID, and now now, you know, the the CEO was terrified that we were going to be like less. First of all, I've been remote the entire time. Like the company's based in Austin. I'm actually in Southern California. I've never even been to the office once. But we did have a nice office with a nice phone where people would get called back in the traditional way. And then the whole thing got shut down as a result of COVID and there's no plans to open it back up. We're, we're, we're operating pretty smoothly um, in a complete remote, remote capacity, which is awesome. So, all right. Um, okay, guys, any other questions? Anyone want to raise a hand, check in, or you can throw them in the chat. Brenda's asking about pricing. I can talk about that, Brenda, if you like. Um, you know, we are like every other website company and we have, you know, a monthly subscription and then we're unlike every other website company. And essentially we are running a complete art business university. Um, it is a university that teaches one thing, how to market and sell art and photography online. Uh, there are no graduates because the learning never stops. And we actually teach all of the things everybody wish they actually learned in art school, i.e. how to grow a business from your art, how to grow a profitable business from your art, how to get it to support yourself, digital marketing and everything else. So I think our lowest plan, so you, you pay a fee, a tuition to get into the university. Once you're in, you pay it one time, you're there for life, that'll never change. And then you just pay monthly in terms of the subscription. So the cheapest plan to get in, which I think is what you're asking me, is $1,000 down from the university and then the monthly I think is like $49 or $39, um, something along those lines. If you request a demo, um, Brenda, the, the demo process is like, before they schedule the demo, it's like a 10 minute call, 15 minute call, and you can ask all the questions about prices and everything else. I honestly don't know all the ins and outs of all the plans and numbers, um, but yeah. All right, I think we'll leave it there. I think that's done on questions, guys. Thanks, thanks for uh, spending time and uh, attending, and I hope it was useful, and uh, come and see us again anytime. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.